For part D of this experiment, we will use extraction to isolate a neutral compound from a mixture containing an acid impurity. We will then identify the isolated neutral compound by taking its melting point. Our mixture of acid impurity and neutral compound is unknown number two. And we'll start by transferring approximately 150 milligrams of unknown number two to a centrifuge tube. The mass of unknown number two that we will be using is 0 0.1521 grams. I've transferred our approximately 150 milligrams of the unknown number two mixture to our centrifuge tube. And we're now going to add four milliliters of diethyl ether to our tube and we'll shake until all of the solid has completely dissolved. Now that our solid has completely dissolved in the ether, we're going to extract the acid impurity by performing two extractions using two milliliters of 1.0 molar sodium hydroxide. And we'll collect each extraction in a separate test tube for the first extraction and the second extraction. So we're gonna add two milliliters of 1.0 molar sodium hydroxide to our test tube. We'll shake for 30 seconds and then allow the layers to separate. Now that the layers have separated, we're going to remove the bottom aqueous layer using a pasture pipette and transfer to a test tube for the first sodium hydroxide extraction. We'll next add a fresh two milliliters of 1.0 molar sodium hydroxide to our test tube with the ether to perform the second extraction. We'll now remove the bottom aqueous layer using a pasture pipette and transfer to a separate test tube for the second sodium hydroxide extraction. We are next going to add six molar hydrochloric acid dropwise with stirring to our test tubes containing the first sodium hydroxide extract and the second sodium hydroxide extract and we'll test that the solution has become acidic with pH paper. You can see that we've made our first sodium hydroxide extract acidic with the addition of the six molar hydrochloric acid. And this is what our extract now looks like. We'll now add six molar hydrochloric acid dropwise to our second sodium hydroxide extract. And we'll test the pH with pH paper. And you can see that we've now made our second sodium hydroxide extract acidic with the addition of the six molar hydrochloric acid. And this is what our second sodium hydroxide extract now looks like. We have our first and second sodium hydroxide extracts after the addition of the six molar hydrochloric acid And this is our first sodium hydroxide extract and our second sodium hydroxide extract after the addition of the six molar hydrochloric acid. You can now draw some conclusions regarding the removal of the acid impurity from our mixture using the sodium hydroxide extracts. We next need to dry our ether layer and we're gonna start with the addition of two milliliters of saturated sodium chloride solution and we'll shake for 30 seconds.
Now that our layers have separated, we're going to remove and discard the bottom aqueous layer into a beaker. We're then going to transfer the ether layer without any water into a clean test tube and we're going to dry the ether layer with anhydrous sodium sulfate. While we allow our ether layer to dry over the anhydrous sodium sulfate, we'll pre-weigh a clean, dry test tube. The mass of our pre-weighed test tube is 8.0370 grams. We'll next transfer our dried ether layer to our pre-weighed test tube using a filter tip pipette. We'll next evaporate the ether from our pre-weighed test tube by placing the test tube in a hot water bath and directing a stream of air into the test tube. The mass of our pre-weighed test tube and our unknown solid is 8.1170 grams. We now need to take the melting point of our unknown solid and identify it from the following list. We will now determine the melting point of the unknown neutral compound in unknown number two. This concludes part D of this experiment.